there are three elements that make or break a combat aircraft aerodynamics, structures and propulsion. If one of these is not at the level that is required for the mission, the whole aircraft will not perform adequately. And no, no system and electronics could compensate for any of those areas. The LC-8 Tejas obviously needed an engine and propulsion was one of the key technologies to be developed to reach the technological self-sufficiency for India. So, the Cavalry Engine Program was born. Welcome to Millennium 7 Star, the channel that helps you make sense of military history, military technology. Please stay with me till the end because the stuff that we discuss here is not easily found anywhere else on YouTube. In 1986, the Indian Defence Ministry's Defence Research and Development Organisation, the RDO, was authorized to launch a program to develop an indigenous power plant for the light combat aircraft. The DRDO assigned the lead development responsibility to its gas turbine research establishment, GTRE, which had some experience in developing jet engines. The objective was to develop a modern engine in the 50 kN class dry and 90 kN with afterburner. The engine had to be light because the Tejas had to be light, so they had to be very efficient. One of the ways to increase the thrust without increasing the weight is to have a high turbine entry temperature, and the design temperature for the cavalry was 1700 Kelvin. That is in line with the most modern Western engines. The first flight of the engine on the Tejas was planned for 1999, considering that even the Western giants of aeronautic propulsion take 10 to 15 years to design a new engine with performance significantly improved if compared with the previous generation, well, the plan was very ambitious. The GTRE, in fact, was required to design and build from scratch a state-of-the-art propulsion unit in just 13 years. It was the perfect recipe for delays. The first element to be ready was the core module named Cabini. In 1995, modern engines are often built around a core that has the purpose to extract energy as efficiently as possible from the fuel. The core can stay relatively unchanged once developed. On the contrary, the low pressure compressor and turbine, the afterburner and the controls need to be tailored for the specific application. In 1996, the whole engine began its test, and as soon as the regimen was increased and the thrust increased, problems began to happen. The GTRE has always been very tight-lipped about the cavalry technical problems, but press sources reported that the main problem was that turbine blades failed with the high temperature. This is a classic problem for jet engines, and the details of the technology to build blades tough enough to resist to the mechanical stress of the spinning at such a high temperature is a closely guarded secret. Modern engines make use of monocrystalline blades and exotic alloys involving rare earth materials. Reinventing this technology from scratch is not easy. The delays caused in 2003 the decision to procure the General Electric 404 uh, engine in the customized IN20 version, at least for the prototype and the pre-production units of the Tejas. In mid-2004, the cavalry failed its high-altitude tests in Russia. This unfortunate development led the Indian Ministry of Defense to order more IN20 engines to power the Tejas production aircraft. At the same time, it was decided to seek help to acquire the missing technologies. So in February 2006, the ADA awarded a contract to SNECMA for technical assistance in working out the cavalry's problem. In September 2008, it was announced that the cavalry would not be ready in time for the Tejas, and the engine program was decoupled from the plane, at least for production purposes, and the F404 was chosen for the Tejas Mark I. However, the problem of making the country autonomous for the fighter propulsion was still there. The politics around the program has been extremely complex and we won't go in details here. 
What is important is that quietly the GTRE and SNECMA managed to improve the engine and refine the design. The Cavalry prototype was successfully flight tested at the Gromov Flight Research Institute near Moscow in November 2010 for the second time and it went well enough to declare the engine flight worthy. However, the performance was still around the 70%, 80 or 85% according to other sources, of the thrust required, and the engine was weighing 1,235 kilos against 1,100 kilos required. And a lot of other issues were still not resolved, like compressor flutter, vibrations, and unstable afterburner combustion. In 2013, the contract with NECMA ended. For a short while, Rolls-Royce seemed to be picking up the development, but in 2014, the DRDO officially abandoned the project. But this is not the end of the story because, well, it seems like abandoning the race in the last lap, so the GTRE has kept a low profile since then, but it didn't let the project go. In fact, in 2016, unconfirmed press reports began to surface that Safran, which today includes NECMA, was in contact with the Indian government proposing a program to bring the cavalry development to a conclusion. It was actually expected that the cavalry development was included in the package related to the recent acquisition of the Rafale, but nothing official was announced. But one thing we know for sure, it's not over yet, because the potential market for a fully functioning cavalry is huge. It is difficult to describe from a technical point of view an engine that is not yet in service. And it is even more so because according to press sources, the Safran proposal may include replacing the Cabini core with the Snecma M88 core, the same as the Rafale. The current cavalry configuration is a two-spool axial turbofan with a very low bypass ratio around 0.19 to 1. The cold section has a three stages low pressure compressor with inlet guide vanes. The compression ratio is 3.38. The high pressure compressor has six stages with a compression ratio of 6.5. The total compression ratio is around 22. The cold section appears to be one of the areas that need improvement since flutter and aerodynamic vibration have never been totally eliminated. The combustion chamber is a ring chamber. The high-pressure turbine has a single stage with air-cooled directional solidification blades with a thermal coating. The low-pressure turbine has cooled blades as well. The turbine seems to be one of the areas where the problems have been successfully fixed, allowing for a relatively high turbine entry temperature. The engine control is assured by a FADEC entirely developed in India. The last declared performance was a dry thrust of 51.3 kN and 80.2 kN with the afterburner. So on the paper, the performance is not bad at all, and we can only hope that there will be the possibility to run the last mile and make the engine fully operational. So if you like this video, I'm sure you will find interesting the videos that are going to appear beside me. In the meanwhile, please like, dislike, subscribe and hit the bell so you won't miss anything, and if you could consider supporting the channel on Subscribestar and Patreon, that would be really amazing. In the meanwhile, stay safe, thank you very very much for watching, and see you in the next time.